So let us continue with our discussion on say there is a you know there is a particle moving along this path C all right let's call this C then you know this that uh, the direction of the velocity is that of dr dt and its magnitude is the speed so what we have is that uh, dr dt i can write it as dr dt okay and let's just put a unit vector here t along the direction of the tangent line okay and so the direction is completely confined to the tangential direction but when we go to the acceleration vector that is d2r dt square okay there we will have both tangential as well as a normal component right and say this is unit normal vector all right in the direction of uh, increasing t then what we want to do is that we want to write the components of this vector in terms of the tangent and the normal to study our motion further so let's go along that direction so what we got is that we have dr over dt is uh, the magnitude of dr dt that we are calling the speed and uh, then a unit vector in the direction of the tangent line uh, which we are denoting by t or simply let's call it uh, let's just formally for one time let's denote it as t so one thing is this that a unit tangent vector okay is uh, going to be given by the uh, the reciprocal of the speed times the derivative of r okay and remember this that our uh, our assumptions are that dr over dt is continuous okay and uh, then is continuous does not does not cross itself and also that uh, this is not equal to zero so our definition there is a valid definition okay so let's keep our conditions straight here so this is what we have here okay now let's also consider the arc length parameter okay that is say we are calling the arc length as the length of the arc measured from the starting point say the point is a all right up to the point corresponding to t okay so actually uh, what i meant is that arc length s of the curve okay measured from a point a so let me just uh, give you a quick illustration so say we are starting the curve at this point a all right and uh, say this is r t okay corresponding to the parameter t parameter could be time all right and we do this that we introduce another parameter that is so say s where s is the length of the arc measured along this so we can reparameterize this as if we want you know r according to s sorry about thickening it like this okay so so we can have several parameters so let's just uh, confine ourselves to say t the time and s the arc length okay so if you recall from calculus 2 say we wanted to write a measure of arc uh, excuse me arc length from a to b all right or t equals a to t equals b okay uh, what it was 
was uh, it was uh, the integral from uh, a to b of square root of okay, the square root of dx dt square plus dy dt square right so dx dt square and then we got plus dy dt square dt now in this uh, three-dimensional situation with every all the assumptions satisfied we can just extend it to uh, right here that instead of uh, since we have the z coordinate coming in and we have x y and z all of them functions of a single variable t so in this we can just expand it to this i'm being extremely informal right now so but anyways so let's keep it this way and if you notice what is this quantity inside the square root the quantity inside the square is square root is simply that's the magnitude of what dr dt because dr dt these are the components of dr dt right and uh, when you square them and, and, and add them together, what do you get? You get the magnitude of dr dt, right? So, you know, what we can have is this, that say s is the uh, length of the arc, okay, measured from a point, say, starting point A, all right, then the arc length from A to T may be taken as uh, what? I will just introduce a dummy variable here okay so right here okay now what does the fundamental theorem of calculus tell you it tells you that if you differentiate s with respect to t right uh, what you are going to get is uh, you are going to get the magnitude of dr dt all right so what we have is so that is the so that's how we denote the speed here and we can also write if we would like that our uh, dr dt is uh, in fact uh, ds dt okay all right times so what simply remember our vector vector t hat that we took so here is our t hat okay now what we want to know is let's just go ahead and see we can relate if if we can relate the or we can say something about the direction of the normal vector now what is the normal vector normal vector is a vector that's perpendicular to tangent so what we are going to do is that we are going to cash on this fact that t, t dot t is 1 so if we differentiate it or this equation and uh, use the product rule right what we will get is uh, we will simply get uh, this thing here that 2 times I mean the, this is a square so that will be 2 times t hat times dt hat over dt and that becomes uh, what zero and which uh, automatically means uh, what which this means that uh, this is this t hat uh, that this and this are at a right angle okay so what we mean is this that uh, these two vectors uh, this vector here one moment and this are perpendicular right are at sorry about the fonts are at at 90 degrees angle okay so we have obtained the direction of the normal vector what is that that is the uh, you know that is the direction of t hat, dt hat dt okay so what we would like to do is this again what was our objective we want you know we want to obtain 
the components of this acceleration vector uh, in the direction of the tangent and that of the normal, right? And what we have here is that we simply have this, uh, let's just uh, write this as v, v for the velocity, okay? So we are just introducing this symbol that, uh, that yeah, let me just type another line here, okay? That this is v the velocity, right? So dr over dt is vt, okay? So if we compute uh, the second derivative, okay, uh, what shall we get is, again, we'll use the product rule here. One part is scalar, the other is a vector, okay? And, you know, we have to be cautious only when we have cross product here, otherwise we are good, okay? So first we, first let's just differentiate this. So that will be what? That will be our tangential component, right? dv over dt. And then what we get? v times, uh, excuse me, d dt, and then we have t hat here. Okay, so, and this is along the normal, right? But this, so, but this, uh, this vector is a unit vector, but this may not be a unit vector. You can take several examples to check. All right, so let's ju just bring in somehow the unit normal vector here, okay, so, th so that we can write the two components uh, like clearly, okay. So what we would do is uh, this, that is, remember we have uh, this quantity here, ds uh, dt, right? So we have the arc length and time, you know, both of them playing roles as parameters. So let us look at another quantity that we define in terms of this unit tangent vector and this arc length parameter, okay? And what I'm going to take up now is called the curvature, okay? And let me see what, let, let me, let, let's just discuss what the curvature is, okay? So see, we are traveling along a straight line, all right? This is our path. Now, notice in this case, this is the direction of the tangent as well, right? Okay, so in this case, the normal component, it just uh, does not exist, right? So that will, the normal component will be zero. So the curvature, the curvature arises only when we are facing a curved path, okay? So, so here we are changing, the curve is bending. So what we are going to do is this, that we are going to take a measure which will give us how fast or how does the uh, curve bend or the, or in other words, more precisely, what is the rate of change of this, uh, you know, tangential direction as we move along it. So, and curvature, we notice it, it almost, uh, you know, every day in our daily lives, for instance, uh, so this is, uh, say, the Germantown, Maryland train, train station, and here tracks are straight. Now, by the way, I misspoke a few moments ago. I said that the normal direction doesn't exist. All right, I meant normal component would be zero, all right? I didn't mean it doesn't exist. So this is like tangent is the line itself. Normal will be a perpendicular line, but the acceleration doesn't have any component in that direction or the component is zero. So anyways, so in a straight line, yeah, we don't have to worry about the normal component, but when there is bending, you can see uh, right here, the motion will be affected because the velocity vector will be changing direction, right? And uh, we don't have to go to train station. I mean, you know, this is I'm taking exit to my house from uh, 270 north. And you can see the, the, the velocity vector is changing direction. And the 
uh, rate of change at which the direction is changing is affecting my driving whether I'm measuring it directly or not. So let's go to our derivation screen. So here, yeah, let me erase ds over dt for the moment and we wanted to define curvature. So we are going to take this that uh, the derivative of the unit tangent vector okay with respect to the arc length okay we are going to call that uh, the curvature at a point okay so here is my curvature okay uh, this is a symbol for curvature so this is how it's going to be defined all right so one first of all one way to compute the curvature would be that so we like we know how to compute dt hat dt so and uh, so here it is and we can write dt hat dt as uh, dt hat ds by chain rule dt hat ds and uh, sorry and times ds dt okay and uh, uh, remember this so what does this equation give us if we take the magnitudes of all these vectors okay so here we go and uh, here we are and this is the magnitude of dr over dt and for our smooth curve and this was the magnitude of dr dt remember and uh, for our smooth curve that's uh, we can assume that to be non-zero so the curvature okay or ds uh, dt all right can be written as dt hat dt over this. It just depends. Sometimes this will be quite handy to compute the curvature. All right. That is the curvature equals this quantity. All right. Or, you know, we can employ another way in the following manner that is notice this here when we look at dt hat dt okay let me so this is one we, we will summarize these at the end okay so so now we can take uh, see this up all right and uh, we also know that our uh, dr dt is okay is equal to its magnitude times uh, what times the uh, the t hat okay all right or in other words here we are having too many symbols right now in other words we got this okay and uh, you saw that sudden that we have been that, that there is a sorry about that that there is a rule that shows how to obtain curvature by taking that cross product of dr over dt times d2r dt square so let's see how that comes about okay so let's compute this cross product okay let's see this cross okay right here okay which will mean that we got this uh, vector okay and then cross product uh, with this vector and that will make the life kind of easy because this would be v dv dt okay and uh, then t cross t and you know t cross t they being you know they have uh, angle zero in between them so the cross product is zero and then plus what we have uh, uh, v times v is v squared right 
and v squared times what? T, oh, sorry, t cross dt dt, right? Right here. t cross dt dt. Okay, so then uh, we have, see this t cross t is zero. So all we get on the right hand side is this vector, right? And uh, so if we look at the cross product, all right, that becomes this vector right here. And then that uh, gives us what? That gives us the magnitude of this vector will be v squared, right? And uh, then the magnitude of, sorry, uh, v squared, all right, times the magnitude of t, t hat, okay? So we got t hat times the uh, magnitude of dt dt and then how much is the angle between the two 90 degrees right so that's a 90 degree angle okay and then uh, this so you can see this here two of the factors here this factor is a one this factor is a one so what shall we get is we shall get that uh, this simply becomes dt hat dt times this and uh, let's just uh, note one more thing here just like one substitution after another uh, if you look at this quantity on this side see you can write this as dt ds times uh, what dsdt right so that is going to be what that is going to be dt ds okay and uh, then your dsdt which is again what simply the velocity so what we get after this is uh, that uh, one moment that this quantity here the right hand side uh, that is uh, simply this now who is uh, this this is the curvature right remember that's the curvature k okay and uh, what uh, did I do? I don't know. Did I erase something? I'm so tired. Can't even see that. So anyways, that's K and then that is a V. All right. So then uh, this gives us what? When we substitute that in here, this gives us that, uh, that this is kv right okay all right which means what that uh, v cube k okay v cubed k equals write this here and uh, then the curvature is given by so we have this value in the numerator okay and v cube in the denominator and which can be changed to if you want okay that is this is simply the cube of who dr dt right because the magnitude of dr dt is the velocity so we can just write this as a 
cube here, okay? So there, there, there are two different rules that we shall use for computing curvature whenever, you know, it is easier in a given format. One is this and the other one is uh, simply what? Uh, this one that is, uh, remember, we got dt hat over uh, dt, right? Divided by dr dt, okay? This, so as convenient, we shall use one of these two rules. Now, just let's just derive one more result because we just wanted to connect this curvature to the uh, normal component of the acceleration. So it won't take too long and we can finish that in this long video. So let's go ahead and we wanted to see the components of acceleration. So let's bring this back. All right. And so here we go. So we got this. This is the acceleration, right? And uh, then what had we gotten for d, dt hat over dt? Now just one more definition. Remember t hat and dt hat over dt are perpendicular to each other. So we can define what is called the uh, principal normal vector as, okay, at the point where uh, dt hat dt doesn't vanish, okay. So as a unit vector in the direction of dt hat over dt, all right? Okay, so one moment, here we go, dt hat over dt. So in other words, you can write dt hat dt as, 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 this quantity in terms of the principal normal vector, right? Okay, and uh, now what we have is, so we got dt right exactly, and we just computed just somewhere around here. Okay, yeah, right here. You see, this thing, dt hat dt, if we look at this, then this tells me that uh, this quantity is uh, how much? Okay, uh, let me bring it in the second line here. Okay, that uh, this uh, quantity is k times. I think we wrote it before, but uh, we are writing it again. Yeah, this quantity is kv. We just saw a while ago. So, it doesn't hurt writing it again. All right, times uh, this, okay. And uh, that is, uh, this is V times the curvature, right? Okay. Uh, what, what we meant is this, let me not lose the logic here. Okay, so yeah, write that. So we got what dt hat over dt is all that. So this would be what dt hat dt is. This gets replaced by who? The velocity times the curvature, okay? All right, so the acceleration vector is what? So you can see we are almost done here. And then I'm just going to write the four sentence summary of what we did. So we got this. Okay, and there we are. Okay, that is a tangential component is what? Tangential component is dv dt. And what is the normal component of the acceleration? A square of the velocity times the curvature and that we have to handle when we are going along a bending curve, right? So what we have found in this discussion is this. Let's, let me just quickly 
uh, bring everything back, the important ones that we had. Okay, so we so we started with uh, d2 r dt. One thing that we have is that the curvature is sorry that the so this is the summary that we can take we can compute curvature by this rule or if we want we can use uh, this rule whatever is convenient wherever okay and then we got uh, this that uh, the velocity is uh, speed times the unit tangent vector right come on okay the unit tangent vector and we just saw this here that the acceleration is this vector so in that uh, this portion is the tangential component and this portion is the normal component. I mean, you know, you, you did circular motions at, in, in more basic classes and there for the circle, the curvature is the reciprocal of the radius and you saw that the perpendicular component was V squared by A there, right? So let's take up an example, just, just one simple example to work with and then we conclude this video. And again, it's optional for you to watch. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Okay. So just for an example, let's get the unit tangent, unit normal, and the curvature for this curve at uh, the point 1, 0, 0. And we will also compute the tangential and normal components. All right. So starting with this, what do we need for t hat? We need the derivative of r okay so we start with simple something as simple as that okay we have the derivative of r equals how much and there will be just a routine calculation we have negative sine t okay then we got cosine then for ln of cosine what we will do is we'll use the chain rule so what what will happen first the derivative of a log of a quantity is uh, 1 over the quantity times the derivative of the quantity so the derivative of sine t sorry cosine t is negative sine t now notice this the value of t for 1 0 0 would be if i set cosine t equal to 1 i get t equals 0 sine matches here and this becomes natural log of 1 that also becomes 0 so who corresponds to 1 0 0 here we have this occurring at 1 zero sorry zero right now uh, in order to obtain the unit tangent vector what we need is we need the uh, magnitude of dr dt so first let's just notice that this quantity is what tangent of t okay all right so if I want to write the magnitude of dr dt, that would be how much? That will be you know, kind of very straightforward quantity. That is square root of sine square t plus cosine square t plus or rather actually no plus yes because we will write the square of negative tangent t so that will be tangent square t right so what we get is 
again here Pythagorean identity gives this equal to 1 and then further Pythagorean will give us so this is a 1 and 1 plus tangent square t is secant square t and what I'm going to do is this here because of the nature of this cosine t uh, let's just keep our uh, domain within negative uh, pi over 2 to pi over 2 so secant t is positive in that region and so we can just take that as secant t and we will be confined will confine our interest into this range of values of t so what happens here your t hat would be 1 over secant t I mean they are asking at that point and we are doing it like much more much beyond the call of our duty so so what we have is we have uh, exactly we got dt hat sorry or t hat at t equals uh, zero is and there was a unit vector already because that zero secant t is one so anyways let's just write it down and that's a very easy looking vector what that is one over secant t is a one so this is a zero and this is a one at zero and this will become zero so that's our t hat at one zero zero now let's get let's get our n hat so for n hat what we have to do is this uh, we have to take the derivative of t hat right so if we do that let's multiply this in and see or 1 over secant t in and see what that becomes so 1 over secant t is what that's a cosine t so that will give us our t hat as negative uh, sine t cosine t right and then here multiplied with this this will give us a sine cosine square t and and then multiplying this by cosine t notice what happens is cosine here will cancel the cosine in the denominator so this will just reduce to how much sine t so that's how much uh, d hat is so now we will obtain the derivative of uh, uh, d hat over dt okay because that's what will give us our normal vector this is along the normal vector so let's go ahead and compute this so here what we get first uh, sine t the derivative would be cosine t so first we get what we get cosine square t right okay and uh, then when we come here derivative of cosine t will be negative sine t so i get negative sine square t okay so that's what we got here then for cosine t square t we can use the chain rule so we got two cosine t then times the derivative of cosine t which would be simply negative sine t right okay so we'll put a negative sign here and this will simply become a cosine t all right and then at t equals uh, zero what we have is when t is zero we got uh, this quantity as okay uh, this is a uh, 1 sine t is 0 so we get a negative 1 cosine then this will become a 0 because just a moment 
because this sine t is zero, so this whole thing is a zero, and then cosine of zero is how much? That's a one, right? Okay, so its magnitude is how much? A square root of two. So what is the unit normal vector then? The unit normal vector is uh, this vector right here that we had to find okay that is okay let me just put a connective here okay 1 over square root of 2 that is the magnitude of dt hat dt times this all right and for the curvature i think it will be good to employ which rule uh, we can just use, uh, remember, the first one was this, that uh, we will take this thing here and uh, divide it by who? The velocity, or in other words, the magnitude of dr dt. And how much is the magnitude of dr dt? That happened to be a 1. You noticed it right here, right? Remember, when t is 0, secant 0 is 1. And uh, this guy has a magnitude of a square root of 2. So our curvature is how much? At that point, that's a square root of 2. So now let's quickly look at a graph in MATLAB. And then we would you know, extend it further in another video. Or I shall post some more notes for you. So let me just lie, write a live script here. So new live script. Come on, live script. Okay, so it just came down here. All right. Let me just shrink it here. Because we, okay. So, and this is the function that we have to plot. Uh, let me see if I can increase the font size here. Yes, I can. So what I'm doing is, I'm doing sims t, right? So I just took a new live script, okay? All right. Now what I have is that I have f plot 3, okay? Then I have to write my cosine t, sine t. What happened? Okay, okay, all right, just a second looks like that uh, I don't know how that migrated there but it did okay all right then we have log for logarithm right and then I'm going to go from negative uh, 1.57 to positive okay and then I'm going to type in my line width. You don't have to increase the font size. I just have to make it visible. That's why I'm doing it like this. So my line width is 3. Let me see if this will. Yeah. So, so we type the function. So you know what I would do? I'll just expand this now. We don't need that guy anymore. Now all that I have to do is, uh, like on my Windows computer, I just put Control Enter, and here is a graph, and I think this is the portion at uh, zero. All right, we will discuss it further in another video. Now it's getting too late in the morning now. All right, so let me stop this video here, and uh, you just continue. You know, just watch it as long as uh, you would like. All right. Okay.